Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and in the last video I got started on a paper mache dog. This is a basset hound that we're working on and if you want to follow along you can get the free pattern at ultimatepapermache.com slash basset hound. You can also make your own pattern if you'd rather make some other kind of dog. I've got a video that shows you exactly how to do that and I'll put a link to it down below. Now in the first video I showed you how to put the pattern together so that the legs would be pretty much where we wanted them. But at the end of that video everything was kind of floppy and loose. So uh, it was really important to get some more padding on here to make a more solid armature. It doesn't look like I got very far actually but it did take me about an hour to fill this in because I had to do a lot of fiddling to, to move those legs around and the reason I had to do it is because I didn't engineer this pattern the way I did for the ones in my books or or the ones back here. This, this pattern is made the same way that anybody would if they were only going to make one sculpture for themselves. Um, and the reason that it still ends up working, even though things aren't quite in the right place, and I did have to like change his leg a little bit more, and I did have to move his things around a little bit, but it still works because you're sculpting the same way that you would if you were working with clay. It's perfectly normal, as a matter of fact, when you're sculpting, to have to make a whole lot of changes. You have one decision after another, and, and eventually you find out that you've made a couple of decisions that don't work as you keep moving along and so you have to change them. If we were working in, in clay, then you would just you know, take that lump of clay off and you put it somewhere else, it would be really intuitive. That's not quite the case when you're working with paper because you gotta get, you have to get out your, your knife and start chopping things off so it looks like, oh, that didn't work. But actually, eventually it does. I wish I could show you how this is going to look when it's all done. I can't obviously because I haven't finished him yet, but I promise it is going to look really nice when he's finished. Now, in addition to all the fiddling around I did, another thing that took longer than it might have is that I used crumpled paper and masking tape instead of crumpled foil. The foil is a faster way to make an armature. I'm not entirely sure even that it's more expensive than crumpled paper and masking tape. I bought a little hot glue gun the other day that cost about as much as two of these uh, rolls of masking tape and I'm, I'm using quite a lot of masking tape on this this sculpture and you can't really buy the cheapest kind because if you do uh, it'll little little ears come popping up you know just little corners and if you have a hundred of those all over your sculpture and then you try to put paper mache over it it's a real pain in the neck so do get some good masking tape if you want to use the crumpled paper um, instead of the foil you don't have to get frog tape I, I didn't actually choose this just because it matches my shirt <laughs> That was a complete coincidence. Um, I just happened to have some of this in the house because I spent all last summer painting my house inside and out and I had some left over. But normally I would use this kind. If you're using crumpled foil instead of the paper, it'll go on a little bit faster just because when you ball up the foil, it stays balled up. You don't have to keep uh, chasing it around like uh, crumpled paper tends to unfold itself when you're not looking until until you get the tape on it and the other thing is that you can put on a fairly large lightly crumpled piece and then squish it down to match everything when you're using the paper and the masking tape you have to create those shapes um, with the with the masking tape itself so you're it just takes a little bit more time so let me show you how I got to this point fiddling and all. <laughs> Let's get to it. I'm going to fill in first of all underneath these legs because even though we have them positioned now they're still really floppy and we need to get them solid so that we don't keep moving things around. So let's get started here. There's going to be a lot of paper and a lot of masking tape. We're just going to cram it in behind there. Again, the same thing would be done if you're using aluminum foil and hot glue. This is the middle of his leg. This is obviously the middle of his chest. And you look at your photographs to see how far out the legs need to go. You got a little bit of help with the spacers that we put on before, but we still want to make adjustments if we need to. So keep your photographs right in front of you all the time that you're working. I'm 
Okay, now see how much more solid that is now than it was? Here's one that hasn't got any padding. Look at that, it's just really loose. And this one is really tight. So that's what we need to do on all four legs. I'm doing some major surgery on them right now. When I did the first video, I put both legs evenly on both sides. And now that I'm seeing the photographs and I'm putting all the padding on there, I realize that this hind leg has to come way forward and down so that his hind leg can actually be under his tummy, sticking out under his tummy. And that means I had to remove that leg Okay, that's going to work much, much better. You're going to need to make some changes to yours too, I'm sure. You don't want to ever feel obligated to hang on to the first decisions that you make, because if you do, then you might lose the opportunity to actually um, end up with something that you really like. <laughs> so if it looks like it needs to be changed, go ahead and change it. Okay, I got the legs on the way I want them, and they're solid, and I keep fiddling with it to make sure that it really is going to um, sit down the way I want it to. And what we need to do now is just fill this in here on both sides, of course. Now I am going to keep the body below the line of the, the center of the legs. That way when the hips and the shoulders are added, they'll be higher than the chest and the tummy, which is normal for a dog. When you're doing this part of the padding, you're going to need to keep making him sit up or stand up, whichever way you want him to, to be when he's done, because this is going to make the body portion solid, just like the, the padding around the legs did. So we, we don't want to um, put on a whole bunch of padding and then discover that we have to take a whole bunch of padding off <laughs> because because it doesn't sit up or stand up the way he's supposed to. So I'm just going to go ahead and right now and turn him over and start working on this side and then just do both of them together at the same time. I don't like the way this leg looks. to be like that. Once we start putting the aluminum foil on those feet, they're going to be a lot bigger than they are right now. So they look kind of funny at the moment. But what I'm fighting with right now is just making sure that this back end, uh, the, the hips essentially, are in the right place so that it curves and, and it looks the way a, a Basset Hound would look when he's sitting down. I squished it a whole bunch, I moved that back leg, I stretched this out so that it's a little bit straighter, just made it a whole bunch of little, little decisions. But I really do want to get this right because this is our sculpture. The paper mache that goes on top of it, that's just the skin. We have to get this part right <laughs> and we need to take as long as it takes. So that's as far as we're going to get today. If you've already started a Basset Hound of your own, you may actually be ahead of me. I know that a lot of people have already started. In the next one, we're going to give him a tail. We're going to fill out all of the muscles and, and uh, details on his legs. Going to give him some really nice feet. I probably won't do his head in the next video though because we want to spend a lot of time. We'll, we'll spend one whole video, I think, on his head. We've got to get some personality in this guy. Now, if you want to make a different kind of dog, I've got a whole video that shows you how to make the pattern. They're not difficult. You might have to fiddle around with a little bit like I did, but uh, just having something to start with makes a really big difference. If you'd like to use this pattern, you can download it for free. It's on my website at ultimatepapermache.com slash basset hound. It's all one word. 
I'll have a new video out soon, so make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll uh, find out when the next one is coming out. If you've already started your Basset Hound, let us know how it's going in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there. <laughs>